Welcome back to DIY Makes Sense. My name is Regina and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I achieved this beautiful board and batten accent wall. And I'm going to tell you this, don't come on my channel doubting yourself. This may look complicated, but it's not hard. You can do this and I'm going to show you how. I'm going to break down the measurements and the math. There's math, but don't worry, I got you. We're going to go with this step by step. Okay, I've never done an accent wall like this before. I've watched several videos and none of them go into the detail that I'm about to go into it with you. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get started. All right, so let's start off with the list of materials. First, we got the pre-cut MDF planks. You can find that in the pre-cut um, plywood aisle in your local home improvement store. That's where I found mine. Liquid nails. Uh, I found that uh, with the adhesives. Uh, it was in the same aisle as the spray paint. Uh, you'll need a level, measuring tape, caulk, spackling, putty knife, paint. This is the paint that you are going to be painting your entire wall when it is done. So that is completely your preference, what paint that you, that you want. Of course, you'll need a paintbrush hammer and nails or a nail gun that's optional you'll need a pencil paper and a calculator of course to help you with the math now from the laser level on down honestly you can get that stuff from the dollar store and don't sleep on the dollar store they have great quality products i've had my wall up for over a year and i haven't had any issues one more thing the paint brush i would not get that from the dollar store i recommend your local home improvement store only because when you're painting you don't want any of the you know little bristles coming out you don't want any what is the word i'm looking for shedding you don't want any shedding with your paintbrush so to start things off i had to figure out what size battens i wanted i went to the store to check out what options that they had and ultimately i went with the mdf it has a smooth finish it's already primed so it's easy to paint plus it won't warp split or shrink so to me that tells me it's long lasting it'll stand the test of time so that's what i decided to go with as you can see, there are a ton of other options for you to choose from if you decide to go and choose something different. Okay, so next up, I'm going to show you guys how I figured out how many battens I would put on the wall as well as the spacing. So I found that the biggest challenge with creating the board and batten wall was figuring out the spacing. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how I um, achieve the spacing that I got, the squares that I was able to get um, by demonstrating on a blank wall. I'm down in my basement, so if the lighting is off, I'm sorry. Um, I created these battens um, just out of cardboard. These are two and a half inches wide. These are the width of the battens that I used upstairs. I already knew the sizing. Um, I cut these, so when I put them on the wall, I'm a very visual learner, so I need to see what it's gonna look like. I put them on the wall and I was able to manipulate them. I saw something that I liked and that's how I kind of got started. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Um, for the wall, uh, I know I wanted a batten on each, each end, so the ends of the wall, as well as top and bottom, right? It's kind of like a frame. So I put one of my battens on one edge I put another one on the other edge, right? So from this point, um, you know, I was going for a square look. I just kind of did it by eye. I'm just kind of placing them so they, you know, they kind of look right. So maybe I'll put, in, and I'm doing it for this wall, for this size wall. So maybe I'll put one here. Maybe I'll put one right here. Oh, I need one with tape. And maybe I'll put one right here. Okay. So for me, for this wall, this looks pretty even. If I had battens going all the way up and down with this spacing, to me, I would be very happy with this. Okay. So that's how I did the vertical battens. For the horizontal battens, I did the same thing. You know, I kind of turned them, one down on the bottom, one um, up at the ceiling, and then I kind of spaced it out from there. Um, and this is how I was able to achieve the look. I think it looks great. Again, I was going for the square look. 
Um, these don't have to be perfect. Okay, once we go into the math, that's going to perfect your square shape. So let's go into that right now. All right, now once you've figured out which wall you want as your accent wall, it is time to measure. Now these are the measurements for my wall. I did them in inches, and I recommend that you measure everything at this point in inches. Later on down the line, we'll convert it all to feet, but for right now, we're working in inches. To calculate how much space these battens would take up on my wall, I multiplied the width of the batten, which is two and a half inches, by six because I knew I would have six vertical boards on my wall that came up to 15 inches meaning all the battens the vertical battens would take up 15 inches of the entire space of my wall all right next I took the entire width of my wall which was 117 inches I subtracted the 15 from that that gave me 102 inches. Now that is the empty space on the wall or the squares. Uh, I took the 102 divided by five. Those are the number of squares I was gonna have on the wall and that gave me 20.4 inches. That is the individual width of each square on the wall. All right, now we got to do the same thing for the horizontal boards. Each board again is 2.5 inches. I multiplied that by five. Those are the number of horizontal boards I would have on the wall that came up to 12.5 inches. Okay, now my wall is 94.25 inches tall. I subtracted that by 12.5 that gave me 81.75 inches i'm going to take that total i'm going to divide that by four because those are the number of squares or empty spaces i was going to have on my wall that also gave me uh, a total of 20.4 inches now the fact that the height and width of each space came out the same measurement 20.4 meant i was going to have perfect squares on my wall now for the most part all my math is done okay i know the width and height of each square of course i know the width of each batten at this point i began to draw directly on my wall from the edge of the wall i measured out two and a half inches right because that's my batten it's going on the end at that two and a half inches inch mark I measured out 20.4 inches. I drew another line. That's my empty space. At the end of the 20.4 inches, I measured out another 2.5 inches. That's another batten. From the edge of that 2.4 inches, I measured out another 20.4. And you're gonna continue to do that until you get all the way to the under other end of the wall. Now, once you're done measuring out all your vertical boards, you're gonna repeat the same process for all of your horizontal ones. I really hope this diagram is helpful in illustrating exactly what I'm breaking down. All right, now after all my measurements were done and I had my grid all mapped out on the wall, I had to figure out how much batten board that I needed. So in order to do that, I multiplied the width of my wall times the number of horizontal boards. I also multiplied the height of my wall times the number of vertical boards. I totaled that together and at this point, this is where you need to convert everything over to feet. Once I converted it to feet, I divided it by 12. 12 is the individual length of one batten board at the store. Once I divided it by 12, that gave me the total number of boards I would need to achieve this design. All right, now I am almost ready to go to the store, but I needed to make sure I had all the board length measurements organized. I knew that I would be installing both the top and bottom boards first. That was simply the, the length, the width of my whole wall. So that was easy. I knew I would have six vertical boards and they all had to be cut to accommodate the top and bottom boards. I figured those measurements out. And then I just knew I would have a lot of horizontal boards measuring 20.4 inches. I had a total of 15. There you go. Now you need to have all of these measurements ready to go and organize in, in order to have a successful trip at the store. If you have a saw already at home, of course you're going to use that. But if you don't have a saw, you want to call your local home improvement store. They may have a, 
a policy in place where they cut materials for you. You want to confirm that first. And just some tips that I have for you when going to the store and you're trying to get your materials cut, I would go in the morning during the week. It's slower. You don't want to overwhelm the individual providing you the service. You just want to make it a little bit easier on them. And that's going to help ensure you get in and out of the store as quickly as possible. With all my boards cut, I am now finally ready to start assembling my wall. Now, when installing the top and bottom boards, I needed some help. There's no way I could get those up evenly on the wall by myself. So once I grabbed my husband, had him help me, I applied the liquid nails on the back. I got it on the wall, ensured that they were both level. And from there, I secured both in place with nails. Next up, the vertical boards. I applied my liquid nails on the back, ensured they were leveled and then press them into place. I held them maybe 20, 30 seconds. And again, I repeated the process for all 15 of the horizontal boards. Now it's inevitable. You are gonna have a few that once you secure them on the wall, they may slide down a little bit. If that happens, and I had a few that did that, I simply grabbed some nails. I put the level on top of each board, you know, that I was having issues with. I tapped one nail directly underneath one end of the board and did the same on the other end just to help secure it in place so it doesn't slide down. Now, baby, when I got to this point, I had to step back, look at the wall, and I was simply in all of myself. I could not believe I did that. I did that, but I couldn't finish it. Okay. I had to wait for the adhesive to dry. Whatever adhesive you use, check the label for the drying time. For me, I had to wait till the next day to continue. The next day I grabbed all my spackling and I filled in all the gaps where all the boards come together. I also grab my caulk and where the board lays up against the wall, there's going to be a gap back there. I filled in all of those gaps or cracks with caulk. Um, I wiped all the caulk up, the excess caulk with a wet rag. So it gave it a very polished look. The next day after allowing everything to dry, I came in with my sanding block and I sanded all the joints nice and smooth. I also taped, put some painter's tape around the perimeter of the wall because I didn't want to get any paint on the adjacent walls. At that point, I was ready to start painting. I grabbed my paintbrush. I started painting the inside of all the squares because uh, my paint roller was not going to be able to get into those tiny little cracks and everything. So I did that first and then I finished up the rest of the wall with my paint roller. I gave it two coats and allowed everything to dry. All right, that is it. My project is done. This took me about four to five days to complete. It cost me about $70, $75, some of the supplies I already had. And of course, whatever, whatever wall you decide to accent in your home, you can just plug all your measurements in the same formula that I utilized. Depending on the design that you choose, the spacing, like I mentioned before, the spacing is kind of the biggest challenge. So I hope my video, the section of the video when I did it down in the basement is helpful to you. Matter of fact, if you're watching this video right now and you know a better way to nail down the spacing, leave a comment down below that will help me, but also anyone else viewing this video that would like to create a board and batten wall as well because I will definitely be doing this wall again. And here are a couple designs that I'm considering. Thank you so much for watching this video. Watch this. Now I told y'all only put these battens up with liquid nails, right? They are not going anywhere. You don't need no screws. You don't need no nails. They are not gonna warp. They ain't going nowhere, trust me. And I've had this up for over a year now. So if you try this project out, don't worry, it's going to stand the test of time and you're going to be very happy with it. If you like this video or if you found it helpful, let me know. Hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in any other DIY projects I got going on, consider subscribing. Also, if you haven't seen my small kitchen DIY makeover, I will leave that linked down below. You got to check it out. Um, my kitchen is awesome. It's so pretty. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.